U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken used an address to members of the UN Security Council Tuesday to slam Russia for blatant violations of UN resolutions over its invasion of Ukraine. Russia is the aggressor. Ukraine, the victim. Russia fights for conquest. Ukraine fights for survival. If countries stop supporting Russia, Putin's invasion would soon come to an end, Blinken told the council members. Blinken also accused China of providing support for Russian aggression against its neighbor. Ahead of the meeting, it emerged the US will send Ukraine an undisclosed number of medium-range cluster bombs and an array of rockets, artillery, and armored vehicles in a military aid package totaling about $375 million. Officials expect an announcement on Wednesday, as global leaders meet at the UN General Assembly, and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky uses his appearance there to shore up support and persuade the US to allow his troops to use long-range weapon S to strike deeper into Russia. The following day, Zelensky meets with President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris in Washington. These actions by Iran, North Korea, and Russia have violated multiple Security Council resolutions. Resolutions that Russia voted for and as a permanent member, has a special responsibility to enforce. This is also not a one-way street. The more Russia relies on their support, the more Iran and North Korea extract in return. And the more Putin gives to Pyongyang and Tehran, the more he exacerbates threats to peace and security, not just in Europe, but in the Indo-Pacific, in the Middle East, all around the globe. As North Korea ramps up its military support for Russia, Putin has reciprocated with military commitments and with money. The two countries recently revived a treaty pledging to provide military assistance if either is invaded. In March, Russia used its veto to end the work of the UN panel of experts on the DPRK, which for 14 years had monitored the regime's nuclear and ballistic missile programs. Russia's banks, are helping North Korea evade sanctions, freeing up more funds for its unlawful weapons programs. North Korea and Iran are not the only ones aiding and abetting Russia. China, another permanent member of this council, is the top provider of machine tools, microelectronics, and other items that Russia is using to rebuild, to restock, to ramp up its war machine, and sustain its brutal aggression. Now, some may ask, how the United States, or any other country helping Ukraine defend itself, can criticize countries for providing military support to Russia. There is a profound difference. Russia is the aggressor, Ukraine the victim. Russia fights for conquest, Ukraine fights for survival. If countries stop supporting Russia, Putin's invasion would soon come to an end. If countries stop supporting Ukraine, Ukraine could soon come to an end. This brings me to the second step that members of this council can take. One of the council's primary responsibilities is seeking to peacefully resolve conflicts. As President Zelensky has said, no one wants peace more than Ukraine. The United States also wants to end this conflict. And before Putin launched his full invasion, we used every tool we could to try to prevent it, including right here at the Security Council. But the way the Council seeks to end this conflict matters. The UN Charter is crystal clear on this point. When fulfilling its responsibilities, the Security Council, and I quote, shall act in accordance with the purpose and principles of the United Nations, end quote. In other words, we must seek a peace that upholds rather than undermines the UN's core tenets. That's why all of us here have a responsibility to support Ukraine's call for a just and lasting peace to end Russia's war of aggression. A just and lasting peace must affirm the principles of sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence. A just and lasting peace must preserve Ukraine's right to choose its own path, its own allies, its own future. A just and lasting peace requires Ukraine's full participation and assent. A just and lasting peace must support Ukraine's reconstruction and recovery with Russia paying to fix the damage it's caused. A just and lasting peace must address both accountability and reconciliation.
U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is hosting a meeting of G7 ministers on furthering support for Ukraine's energy needs as it continues to defend itself against Russia. Speaking on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly, Blinken highlighted recent contributions from G7 member states and stressed that further funding is needed as the winter months approach. We're determined to see Ukraine success, Blinken said. We're determined to support its people as they face this ongoing aggression. We have collectively, as G7 and other uh, partner countries, worked to mobilize resources over the last couple of years for Ukraine, for its people, uh, to ensure that they have the energy supplies that they need and that the country can deliver those supplies to the people who, uh, who need them. The G7 plus countries have mobilized more than $4 billion. Uh, we've had new announcements just in the past month from Germany, from the Netherlands, and others. As for the United States, uh, over $1.8 billion since February of 22. Uh, recently, we've redirected $324 million toward emergency energy sector uh, support. And uh, as well, uh, we have $500 million that were announced by Vice President Harris just this past June. Um, we have once again, not just the prospect, but the reality of Putin weaponizing winter, weaponizing the weather uh, to use energy as a weapon in his efforts to subjugate Ukraine. Uh, and we know that the upcoming winter will be challenging, which is why our countries have been working together every single day to help ensure that Ukraine has what it needs to get through the winter. Bottom line is this. Every country around this table, and so many more, stands strongly and firmly with Ukraine. Uh, we're determined to see Ukraine's success. We're determined to support its people as they face this ongoing aggression.